There are some who argue that the next war will not be a nuclear war, or it may perhaps not even bioterrorism. It will be a cyber war. That's a a third area, uh, and I, I you know I personally think there's only the three, but <laughs> that's not much comfort. Uh, yes, the it, a modern society depends on electricity and communications and information flow. Mm. And if you can, for a substantial period of time, disrupt that, then a lot of systems, you know, including how a hospital organizes itself or how food gets moved around, or financial institutions. Uh, you know, or yeah, an airline decides right. what what to do. Yeah, or bank accounts. Uh, you know, what was that bank account supposed to be? And so, a lot of experts. Uh, in government and and uh, companies now are spending time thinking about okay how do you minimize that how do you have duplicates backup a uh, lot of sophistication going into Your that getting broken into you know there's a there's a sense of security that you lose last week it was the world's largest beef supplier a month ago colonial pipeline supplying roughly 45 percent of the east coast fuel paid a 4.4 million dollar ransom to russian hackers and bitcoin after they access its system with a compromised password. Our Justice Department has launched a new task force dedicated to prosecuting ransomware hackers to the full extent of the law. Ransomware attacks have become routine, hitting everything from groceries to gas, hospitals to transportation to local government. The largest public transit authority in the United States has fallen victim to a cyber attack. Headaches for the Steamship Authority continue today following a ransomware attack. UF Health is the target of a ransomware attack. The FBI confirms to NBC News it is investigating 100 different types of ransomware, each responsible for multiple attacks in the U.S., many originating from Russia. It's a challenge Director Christopher Wray compares to 9-11. We're one step away from cities being plunged into darkness, and that is not fear and uncertainty. That's based on facts. You could take down our electric grid, our transportation, our financial systems. You could virtually paralyze the country. The Justice Department signaled in a memo on Thursday it plans to treat ransomware cases with the same priority as terrorism cases centralizing internal tracking of investigations and prosecutions. The criminal groups that fuel many of these attacks, including some of the recent ransomware attacks that we've seen, uh, come from groups that uh, have links to Russia. We cannot give any quarter, and no country should be harboring criminal actors of any type. How will the U.S. respond? Back in 2016, after Russian interference in the election... Why haven't we sent a message yet to Putin? We're sending a message. We have the capacity to do it, and uh, the message he'll know, said it. he'll know it, and it'll be at the time of our choosing and under the circumstances that have the greatest impact. Now, ahead of a June 16th summit with Putin, the Biden administration is considering offensive cyber operations against hackers inside of Russia. Mr. President, will you retaliate against Russia for this latest ransomware attack? We're looking closely at that issue. The president's message will be that responsible states do not harbor ransomware criminals and responsible countries must take decisive action against these ransomware networks. On Friday, Putin called the allegations nonsense and decided to escalate the back and forth by expressing sympathy for the January 6th insurrectionists. Congress believes we're not just plunderers or robbers. They came with political demands.
publicly about Stux. Two answers before you even get started. I don't know, and if I did, we wouldn't talk about it anyway. Something as simple and innocuous as this becomes a challenge for all of us to maintain accountability control of our critical infrastructure systems. This actually contains the Stuxnet virus. It's impacting industrial control. Is this something that's coming after the homeland? If you get up in the morning and turn off your alarm and make coffee. Power plants, power grids. And pump gas. Transportation, telecommunication. And use the ATM you've touched industrial control systems. It's what powers our lives. Most of these systems are relatively easy for a sophisticated hacker to get into. The security experts who are studying Stuxnet really think it required the resources of a nation state. It spread to any Windows machine in the entire world. We didn't know if it was set to turn off all electricity plants around the world or it would start shutting things down or launching some attack. It was blowing up centrifuges, and it was leaving no trace. There have been assassinations of nuclear scientists. Some human assets had to be involved. Spies. It went beyond our worst fears, our worst nightmares. This is not your ordinary criminal doing this. This is someone bigger. The monster turned against its creators, and now everyone is in this game. This has the whiff of August 1945. Somebody just used a new weapon, and this weapon will not be put back into the box. You've been focusing on Stuxnet, but that was just a small part of a much larger mission. We all know, but still pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack, which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack to use the COVID-19 crisis as a timely opportunity to reflect on the lessons the cybersecurity community can draw and improve our preparedness for a potential cyber pandemic.